This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 37, on the 27th of November 2013. An interview with Jesse Lakes, the CEO of the company GeoRiot. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, the show where we chat with interesting companies that are working in the digital music and media space. And this week, it's a real pleasure to have on Jesse Lakes, who is the co-founder of the company GeoRiot. So, hi, Justin. How, how's it going? Hello, it's uh, it's going well. Thanks for asking. It's a, it's a beautiful day in, in sunny Seattle. That's great to have you. And uh, a really interesting company. I've been talking uh, uh, with uh, Joanna from your team uh, uh, last month, and it's uh, really great to have you on and uh, chat about what you guys do. So first of all, uh, tell me all about uh, GeoRiots uh, in a nutshell. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> great question. So we're a, we're a B2B service, and we solve what we call uh, geofragmentation. And geofragmentation is the uh, the challenges that arise when you're marketing to an international community, uh, when you're marketing products on site, inside of iTunes or on Amazon, uh, yeah. the gist is that you have these international storefronts, uh, each of these storefronts serve their, their local consumers, but uh, they all use different links and different affiliate programs, so we kind of, we solve that in the background so that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, tell me about how the company got started, uh, when did you start out, and uh, what was the scope of the company at the time? So it started uh, really back about 2008, 2009. I was working with my co-founder on a, a project. We were taking soundtracks from extreme sports films and listing them out on this website um, and with links to iTunes and Amazon. And we, uh, we found that we had uh, really exponential growth to the site, but our, yeah. our revenue was very linear. And we started to uh, ponder this and realized that the, the revenue was linear because we were only earning money from, from the U.S., but we had this great international growth. So we started digging in and started finding that a lot of our links weren't working internationally and uh, decided that we should probably be solving that problem. Um, so, yeah, 2009, and it's been, uh, it's been a slow project, but it's been on the back burner for both of us while we uh, had jobs at Microsoft and Apple. And uh, the last year and a half, we've really started to put a lot of time and effort into it and, and ramping it up. Yeah, sure, of course. And uh, uh, looking at it from a music industry perspective, of course, uh, as you mentioned, you started uh, with that, uh, you know, looking at the iTunes uh, uh, problems that, that there were uh, from all the different stores that are around the world. And, you know, the core issue there is that there is a different idea assigned to the content for every different store. Is that right? Yes, yes and no. Um, sometimes you have uh, one one song or one album or even an app that, that has an idea that's around the world. It right. really um, boils back down to a couple different things, but the distributor, who, who controls the rights in, in the different areas, really kind of breaks that apart. So you know, some, some people, uh, Adele, for example, will have you know one idea in the U.S., one in Canada, one in Europe, and another one for, for Asia or so forth. And you know, there's some crossover, and, but a lot of times there's not. Yeah, and I, I remember, you know, working at a, at a label a few years ago, and uh, and there were a lot of issues in trying to get an international, uh, just a, an email going out uh, that had uh, that worked essentially. So, uh, so exactly. I guess that, that you know, at the beginning of the company, that was probably one of the the most important aspects of you pitching the service to to labels, for example, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's you know, some, some labels are really only focused on, on you know, distribution inside of a, a certain region, but it's inevitable that, that people from around the world are going to see this, this link or see you know, their, their marketing efforts. So you know, for, for the better sake of everyone, just you know, it's, it's best to provide a link that does work internationally. Um, yeah. And then there's the, the, the monetization aspect, which I'm sure you'll, you'll hit upon here shortly. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, of course, it's not just about uh, getting consumers to uh, the content. Uh, you know, that, that's a big part of, uh, of it. But it's also mm -hmm. important to be able to track uh, those, uh, that, that behavior of the consumer and to uh, get the money from affiliate links. And affiliate links are kind of a... Uh, a subject that is not really covered that much uh, as in the music industry. We talk a lot about uh, revenues from uh, sales of recordings or streams, uh, you know, live revenues, but we don't really talk about affiliate as much as uh, we should probably. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of artists that probably should use affiliates on their sites that don't yet. So uh, or talk us through briefly, you know, what the advantages are of really uh, having a, a good affiliate strategy as an artist or as a label. Absolutely. Let me take a step back and just make sure that sure. we're all on the same page as far as affiliate Absolutely. is. Um, so affiliate, you know, typically has a, a negative connotation in the marketing space, and that's unfortunate. There's always, you know, that that few five you know, percent or whatever that, that kind of ruin the name. But affiliate, honestly, is a, it's a good, solid, you know, healthy marketing for for internet. And the, the gist is that affiliate is based on. Um, getting rewarded for performance, so not getting rewarded for showing an ad, not getting rewarded for a click, but actually when something goes through and converts. So it makes it a, a very less risky and marketing endeavor for, for large companies, and iTunes and Amazon have, have really endorsed this and, and built out these beautiful programs. So it's you know, in the end, it's a marketing program 
provided by iTunes, provided by Amazon to reward users for sending traffic into their stores yeah. and making purchases. Um, so what's really interesting here is that you know, artists, for the most part, use iTunes and Amazon as, as great distribution channels for their content. So they're already pointing people in that direction. So by leveraging the affiliate program on top of that, they're get, getting rewarded for an action they're already doing. So yeah. yes, you know, affiliate has negative connotation. Wipe that out of your head. You know, think of it as just an extra way to, to make some some additional money for, for something you're already doing. Um, yeah. And then and then let us let us help you with it, with the details because it can get a little technical. It all revolves around a specialized link. That link needs to have the proper affiliate parameters in order to be recognized in the sales and commissions to happen, so forth and so on. But that's let us do that. You, you work on you know focusing on strategy of, of linking, and we'll, we'll partner with you to make that that all work out well. That's great, and uh, and affiliates, of course, and uh, you know we think of affiliates on websites, but affiliates can be embedded pretty much everywhere. So it's not just a website thing; you can use those on, on email, on, on social media, pretty much everywhere. So uh, you know, mm -hmm. how uh, what are the tools to track those affiliate sales as well? You know, do, do you uh, do you advise uh, uh, people that are working with you as to what the best way to do that is? Yeah, so the affiliate just as part of the transparency necessary to make the affiliate agreement work is that yeah. there's some reporting that comes back through that artists may not normally get. So um, if, if you have a link that re you know, was referred and you know, results in, in two album sales and you know, $10 in, in revenue, you know, you'll get a percentage of that. And Apple or Amazon will report that back through the affiliate network so you can kind of see those bits and pieces come through. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a great way to kind of you know, monitor your different channels. You can get crafty with that and, and you know, define different uh, what we call traffic sources. So if you're marketing a social or on your website, or on email, like you mentioned, even marketing inside of an app, perhaps you know you can you can mark each of those links individually. You can start to see how well each of those perform, yeah. and that kind of comes back and helps you with some analytics to decide on you know what, what's the best ROI for your your app, your revenue spend, or your ad spend. Yeah, and, and you know, of course, uh, artists wouldn't think uh, normally of uh, using these uh, type of links, uh, uh, but it's quite interesting to think about it from a from a wider perspective because, of course, uh, uh, we recommend apps, books, uh, and all sorts of stuff every day. And artists do that as well. And so, uh, you know, have you seen a higher adoption of this type of behavior from artists that uh, are savvy enough to think, okay, I'm, I'm recommending a book that I love anyway. Should I use an affiliate link to do that instead of just using a normal link in order to actually make some money off that? Have you seen that type of behavior starting to happen? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's really um, it's really fun working with some of these um, the label marketing heads or digital marketers that, that really start to understand it because the, you know it's it's really a wide open space, you know, great to for artists to promote their, their music, but you know, if, if they just finished a book they really enjoy it, absolutely it's the same thing, it's the same stores. Um, and the way the affiliate programs are structured as well is that you have a, a window of, of um, where the affiliate cookie works. And the gist is that when you recommend a product and they click on that link for the next say 24 or 72 hours, everything that user buys uh, is, is associated back to you. So by promoting books as well as, as albums or, or apps or whatever it may be, you're opening that window more and more times. And every time you open that window, the possibility of getting remunerated for the action is, is, is higher. So it's absolutely, it's a great strategy. And it's really fun to see yeah. people pick up on that and do a good job with it. Absolutely. And, and of course, uh, uh, I was talking about uh, the fact that affiliate is uh, seen as being something that is still relatively hard to implement. So, uh, you know, do you have any uh, tricks of the trade or, or, or tips for uh, smaller independent artists uh, or labels that might want to implement them but feel a little bit uh, sort of overwhelmed by the amount of information out there on how to uh, get this working? Yeah, it's... It can definitely be intimidating. Uh, when we first dove into this back in 2009, I remember waiting, you know, months to get an application through, and it was just a, it was a headache. Um, thankfully, we, yeah, we we figured out a lot of the uh, ins and outs, and we have some great documentation on our website that right. walks you through step by step by step. Um, and it's it's getting easier. Everyone's understanding that this is an essential part of um, online marketing and, and um, making making the workflow flow easier. Um, We've luckily been able to do the same thing with our dashboard and so forth. So uh, it's really not nearly as, as challenging or painful as it used to be. It's still going to take you know, a few minutes of setup. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's you know, super simple, but it's not bad whatsoever. And we're always here to help our clients Absolutely. Uh, walk through them and, and give them a hand. That's great. And so uh, how do you guys make money? So do, do you take a cut of the affiliates that you, that you buy? Is it a subscription fee? How, how does it work? Great question. So we have this model we call click share. The idea is that after you hit a certain threshold, you're going to share a few clicks with us. So that it starts out at 15%. Um, well, let me take a step back. 
clicks are currents. We don't take part of your commissions, we take part of the click. So it's good to define those two. There are, of course, there is, of course a close correlation between the two. But after you hit uh, approximately 100 clicks for a 24 hour period, 15% uh, of your clicks are going to get routed using our affiliate tracking parameters versus our clients' tracking parameters. We have a couple of rules set in place to make that as much of a win win situation as possible. Uh, one, for example, is that we'll take clicks from programs that you don't support yet. So let's say if you're set up uh, in the US and the UK, but not say in Brazil or Japan, we'll take clicks from those countries first so that we can reduce that rate. We really honestly want to make it as much of a win-win situation as possible. We don't want to leave clicks go unaffiliated. We, we know there's some value in that. So yeah. we, we work together to, to figure that out. But it's yeah, the, the click share really works well because it aligns our goals with our clients. Uh, if they're making money, we're making money. Uh, it keeps it very transparent via our dashboard. You can see all that the clicks are coming. Um, and it keeps us from having to do any credit cards or whatever, so it's completely passive. So it's, yeah. that, that's what we do. It's a little complicated to get started with, but it works out favorably once once we dive in. Yeah, exactly. And uh, let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is a uh, an area where uh, affiliates also work very well. Uh, again, an area where it takes quite a bit of work to get those affiliate links in, you know, through annotations and and other means. Uh, are you seeing that pick up too? Yeah, YouTube is. <laughs> I'm sure you've covered this many many times before. It's, it's this amazing platform, and then you know music discovery is happening there, uh, whether we like it or not. So adding any affiliate links to the uh, YouTube picked up on that a long time ago. You'll see those buy buttons, and if you watch really closely, they'll, they'll bounce through the affiliate links as well. So YouTube knew about this for a long time, um, but it's great to see that in you know, the comment sections or annotations, wherever it may be, you know, adding in a, affiliate links or links to your website so that you can then link affiliate um, out to the different uh, stores and so forth. Yeah. But it's absolutely a great channel to to include affiliate links. And absolutely, and, and you know, as uh, you never know what videos are going to become viral, and you know, if you if you see your videos starting picking up steam, even if you are an independent artist or an artist signed to a small label, it's definitely worth uh, making sure that you have some affiliate links uh, leading up uh, even to your own album because uh, I guess uh, what might be worth explaining to people that haven't really used affiliates very much is that if you are uh, an artist that, uh, and you're selling your own music, uh, uh, even independently, uh, especially independently, uh, you know, you get a, you know, the majority of the cut from the sale of the track uh, through iTunes or Amazon, whatever it may be. But if you are... Uh, also selling that track through your own affiliate links you get an extra little bit of money uh, which comes mm -hmm. through uh, on top of the royalties that you will receive anyway so it's essentially a way of, of thickening up your uh, royalty share in a way right absolutely and it's you know, the affiliate piece is is so <clears throat> You hit some core pieces right there. I just want to take a step back. The affiliate piece is really important for the monetization, but the, the what we call the translation, the user experience piece, is also just as important. So exactly. the beauty of what we're doing with GeoRi is we're combining both those pieces into just a single link. So if, if you're not as concerned about the money, but you're concerned about the user experience, perfect, use a link. You know, if you're concerned about making a little bit of extra and you're less concerned about translation, perfect, use the same link. And it's you know, ultimately going to you know, combine forces and give you a, a better experience, give your users a better experience, put more money in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as long as the link works, that's, that's that's uh, the core thing that we, we all want. You know, if the link works, then everything's good. Exactly, exactly. And let us deal with those details for you. Yeah, exactly. And finally, let's talk about, uh, branch out a little bit and talk about all, uh, all the other, other different areas that you work in. So you're, uh, and those are applicable to musicians as well, because of course, uh, musicians also have uh, uh, apps out there. They also create books and eBooks that they want to sell. So you work across all of these areas to be able to uh, allow, uh, you know, cross-country sales of, any type of media, right? Exactly. So iTunes has been our, our bread and butter. We've been focused on that for, for quite a while. Um, and we support all the, the core media types there. So it, the translation and so forth works. So movies, TV shows, uh, audio books, books, uh, apps in particular is a, a really big uh, area where we have a, a lot of clients and so forth. Um, and even links inside of apps, uh, yeah. which I think we've, we've mentioned briefly before. So that's, that's really cool. The Amazon stuff is, is relatively new to us. We've been working on it for about six months now. Um, and it's really exciting because Amazon sells everything. Um, yeah. And we're, we are really have been diving into to working on those uh, translation algorithms and so forth to ensure that the, the better customer experience across the board. And it's, um, it's exciting to, to take digital media and expand to physical goods and, and then bring it back into digital media on the Amazon side. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's fun because, of course, uh, uh, the Apple eBook store, for example, hasn't taken off anywhere near as much as uh, Amazon's uh, Kindle store. So uh, for you to be able to work across, uh, you know, Kindle books and, uh, and, and that's a big headache as well because I've got, I used to have a US account on Kindle and, and then I switched to UK. And now when I click a link, sometimes it tells me, oh, this content is not available in the, in the US store or vice versa. And it, it is a bit of a, a it, it is not a great user experience yet. 
essentially. Exactly. So every single time you're, you're hit with a prompt or an error message, that's lowering the conversion rate significantly. So let's let's eliminate those and get you to the content the author or the marketer wanted you to see in the first place. That's great. And if anybody uh, listening to the show wanted to uh, get in touch or find out more or uh, you know get involved, uh, what's the best way of doing that? Uh, just hit us at contact at GRI.com or you can hit me personally at lakes at GRI.com. Um, great. We, uh, we sit in front of our emails, sit in front of our computers way too much, and we'd be happy to have a chat with you. <laughs> Don't we all? And uh, thanks so much. It's uh, GRIOT.com uh, again. Uh, check it out. It's a really interesting company and, uh, you know, working behind the scenes, but uh, creating some really uh, important services for musicians and labels. Uh, thanks uh, so much, Jesse. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT one-to-one show. Uh, this comes out every week. And you can also check out the weekly news show, uh, Digital Music Trends, on digitalmusictrends.com. You can contact us on uh, contact at digitalmusictrends.com. And the Twitter handle is at DG Music Trends. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week. And until next time. Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.